This is a bread and butter question for steps one and two. Mandatory that you know this vignette going into the USMLE. So before we get started, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hit the button in the bottom right. Hit the like button. Let's get this to all time highs. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. And the link is down below. Now, let's start the fucking question. Eight year old boy, rash on his legs for seven days. He's afebrile. Physical exam shows an excoriated yellow crusted rash in the lower extremities. You need to know excoriated means the, the patient has been scratching. Excoriations are scratch marks. That's an important vocabulary word for US Amelia. You'll see it quite a bit. Urine dipstick shows two plus protein, 50 RBCs, pri powered field, 10 white blood cells, pri powered field. Question merely asks us what is the diagnosis. So let's go through our answer choices backwards for the sake of it. Choice F, minimal change disease. Wrong fucking answer. And the reason this is wrong is because this is nephrotic syndrome. You are not going to have blood in the urine. Nine out of 10 vignettes will be pediatric following a viral infection. So you're going to have child, viral infection, periorbital edema, ascites, pedal edema. That's your textbook presentation. Vignettes need not give you a symptomatic viral infection. Okay. They can just say eight year old boy, periorbital edema, ascites, pedal edema. No other information. Answer, minimal change disease. That's 9 out of 10 vignettes. 1 out of 10 will be an adult who has Hodgkin lymphoma. Why we see minimal change disease in Hodgkin lymphoma? No fucking idea, okay? It just happens. So we treat with steroids. Light microscopy has normal findings. And we will see effacement of the podocytic foot processes on electron microscopy, okay? Choice E, interstitial nephropathy. This 9 out of 10 times, so it's wrong, 9 out of 10 times is going to be NSAIDs, beta-lactam, cephalosporins, followed by eosinophils, white blood cells in the urine. You can rarely get blood in the urine, okay? But you would still have the eosinophils, and it would be with NSAIDs, beta-lactam, cephalosporins. 50% of vignettes will give you a rash, okay? You need not have a rash. It's classic. If This is an allergic reaction of the kidney, okay? It's on the same spectrum. It's just an allergy. And one out of 10 vignettes will give you a post renal obstruction. Choice D, IJ nephropathy, wrong answer. Now, this is where we get into important elements of distinction. If we have a child who has a sore throat, red urine one to two days later, answer, IJ nephropathy. Next scenario, child, sore throat, red urine one to two weeks later. PSGN, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, super important distinction, that difference in time frame for USMLE, okay? Now, this is where some students get pedantic, I should point out. IG nephropathy is viral infections, upper respiratory tract infection, okay? It's not strep, clearly. So upper respiratory tract infection followed by red urine one to two days later, or sometimes GI infection, okay? PSGN, we just said that that's going to be sore throat, strep pharyngitis, followed by red urine one to two weeks later. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, this is where we have some value. Is PSGN can also be due to or secondary to skin infections, it can be cutaneous strep. So, here it appears we have non bolus impetigo. These are school sores. Okay, so impetigo, cellulitis, erysipelas. If we have potential cutaneous, Group A strep, strep pyogenes infection, red urine one to two weeks later, that's still PSGN, okay? Post, uh, type 3 hypersensitivity immune complex deposition in the kidney. Really, really, really important, okay? USMLE loves uh, cutaneous group A strep leading to PSGN. And the answer is acute glomerulonephritis. It's like, oh, wow, like they word it as acute glomerulonephritis. Weird, right? Not PSGN, but... Uh, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. This is an acute glomerulonephritis. So Henoxolian purpura, this one's tricky. And the reason I say that is because it's classically a tetrad of palpable purpura on the buttocks, thighs, can be on the trunk. So that's one. Two would be abdominal pain, three arthralgias, and four IJ nephropathy. And it's challenging because you need not have all four components of that tetrad. They can give you a kid who has a viral infection 
They can say red urine one to two days later. You're like, well, that sounds like IgA nephropathy. They say there's violaceous lesions on the buttocks or thighs or in the trunk. And you're like, well, that's Henox, Sholey, and Purpura. Okay, that's our diagnosis. They didn't give me the arthrologist and the abdominal pain in this particular setting. And uh, so the presentations are multifarious, okay? But this is really high yield for pediatrics. Choice B, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis will be the answer for nephrotic syndrome in sickle cell. I've talked about this in previous questions. Sickle cell plus dark urine, answer equals renal papillary necrosis. Sickle cell plus nephrotic syndrome, answer equals focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. FSGS will also be the answer if you have nephrotic syndrome in the setting of heroin use, so IV drug use, and also HIV, classically. There's other low-yield causes, such as interferon use, but they're not really worth your time. So, Look, that's, a, that's the consolidated uh, explanation for this question, okay? We can do a, a more thorough discussion, but I know you want to see concise clips here. So you know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.